Yes. So, second try. This is very strange. We're live, by the way. 26, number 26. The Christmas Hangout, tr second try. Uh, let's wait for everyone to be okay. Okay, so, uh, second try for this Hangout after a really strange problem, which uh, we'll not share with the community for now. And... Who is with me today? I have four guests. Katrin, can you just say a few words for you? Because you already said, but all that. <laughs> can can you say a few words for you? Or you lost? Or you are lost now? <laughs> uh, I'm Katrin from Norway. Um, Bimmel fan, wearing my Bimmel Break T-shirt today and my Christmas hat in honor of the Christmas edition of uh, Tickle Hangout. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I've done this with you once before, uh, also on Bimol, so it's fun to be back now with all the other guys. Yes, and we'll point to the previous Hangout, of course. So, Mr. Lopez, welcome back now with your phone. Just tell us a few words for you, please. Okay, um, I'm from Portugal, in the far away in Europe. I um, started playing with Bimol a couple of years ago. Indeed. We see a lot of potential in this and just glad to be here and talk about it. Perfect. So we have Oslo, we have uh, we have Norway, we have Portugal. Rasmus, your turn. Shoot. Yeah, well, I'm Rasmus. From, uh, I'm from Denmark, in Copenhagen. Um, yeah. Denmark, Copenhagen. You were also here back in two or three months. So. Yeah, I was... Yeah, half a half years ago, I was uh, uh, joining you for in in memory. Yep, I uh, believe so. Yeah. Yep. But fun to try one on on, on Vimo as well, my uh, newest passion, so to say. Um, okay, so we lost Regis. However, he seems to be back. Let's see what happened with him. Let's wait for a moment until he joins successfully. Um, Bimo, something that obviously became really popular. Ooh. Wait, we're waiting for Regis probably. Let's see if he will join successfully. So let's let's not wait for Regis. I believe he will connect successfully. But Bimo became a bit a bit more famous than I thought it would be. Uh, I continue to hear a lot of stuff about Bimo, and I'm not a business intelligence guy, uh, guys. Please give me just a quick, uh, a quick opinion why this technology is becoming so popular. Katrin, your opinion. My opinion. Uh, well, it saves a lot of time for everyone who works with ETL and SSIS, especially. Um, it's easy to learn. Uh, it's easy to use, and you can start yep. using it right away and save a lot of time from day one. Okay. Mr. Wopas, your opinion, why BMO is getting so famous, so popular? Uh, besides what Katrina already explained, it's also it's a way that the BI persons start, will start to develop more like the normal dev, people that develop a website or application. Um, gives you more structure and force you to develop using patterns. Okay, that's interesting, that's interesting. Rasmus, your opinion? Because Regis is still not here. Yeah, well, main thing has already been said. It's the speed of development. Um, I mean, you can get stuff up and up and running really, really quickly. And if you are fortunate enough to be the owner of a missed license, then I mean, you still have the uh, possibility to use the graphical tool, just drag and drop stuff and put them back on there. And then, as the .NET developers go into the code behind, so to speak. I just go in, edit the BIMO, get the iteration up and going. Yeah. And you have a staging database. I mean, I did that live on Stickle Saturday, Ljubljana, or Slovenia, uh, this uh, Saturday, and I had a staging area up and running in 10 minutes for of AdventureWorks from scratch. That's, that's really, really, I think that, can that be called a game changer? In the ETL world, Catherine says yes. Yeah. 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 O obviously. Okay, so uh, because, let's call it this way, because um, because many people speak about BMO and there are a lot of presentations all around. Uh, many times when I see a presentation, 
I'm like, okay, that that works for your demo. I mean, that works. However, I want to hear from you. What are your experiences with this technology, with BIMO, from the field? Have you already applied it in production, in a real project? Because that's where it really should stand up, right? So anyone apply this? Yes, well, I, I have. I'm, I'm developing our entire data warehouse uh, using uh, BIMO. Uh, I have, I mean, when you put that in production, it doesn't really matter if it's hand-built or it's BIMO-built. The integration service packages are the same, and BIMO-built packages are just nicer and more straightforward to, to look at. Um, but it's the speed of change, the uh, agility that makes that's a game changer. The possibility to add new stuff to a data warehouse, get a new field from your source system into the whole way into star schema, in a matter of just adding it to the metadata and recompiling the uh, the BIML script, and then you have that new field in for your users to um, to query and, and and use in the reporting, instead of having to go through package and package and package and adding that column and get it yeah. all right. I mean, you just plug it into metadata, and, and if your metadata is built right, it will go through the whole stuff by itself, and you're up and running in how long it takes to read. Yeah, I was listening to a session um, in Slovenia about BIMO, uh, and this session showed, and in general, the main point was that if you are using BIMO, BIMO you can do more agile data warehousing. Can yeah. you? Can we agree with this? What's your opinion on this? Absolutely. So, um, Katrin, yep. Yeah, the way we used to develop in SSIS uh, was we used to use templates uh, to speed up development. But if you had to change the packages after you had finished development, you had to go through all the packages one by one and do yeah. Over and over again, um, I I started actually digging through the XML code in the packages, doing regex expressions just to speed up development like that. And now I don't have to. I can just change it in one demo file in in one project, and then it will recreate all the packages for me. So agile, yes. Okay, so that's that's interesting. And you also you you are also I believe back then when we recorded the first one, you said that you are already using this in production, right? Yeah, that was uh, our first project uh, where I actually convinced my boss that this is something we need to implement in our project. Um, we had said no to a project, uh, estimated it for about four weeks. Of uh, work. Yeah, and we said no because we didn't have the time or resources. And I said, just can I please have one day to try this and see how far I'll get in one day? And yeah. I finished the project in one day. So that was like the perfect example <laughs> to to show. Like, oh, why? That's that's a perfect example why you should probably at least try to use yeah. this technology. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes. what about what about uh, Portugal? How are you using BIMO in Portugal at the moment? So we we are not so lucky as Catherine, but um, we are using it mainly for staging areas because it can provide you a great, uh, can give you a lot of time. And the, sting, the staging areas are Regis. Regis, Regis, by the way, sorry for interrupting, Regis, can you hear us? Obviously he is having, let's see whether or not he can hear us. Yeah. Regis, say something. Just shoot. <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> Perfect. It works. It works. So wait for a yeah. moment. We need. We will join you immediately in this because it's now live. So we are already talking. And we. I. I knew that you are going to manage to join. I just knew it. Okay. So, uh, just to complete the, what you are saying about BIMO in Portugal, I was asking. Um, about what's going on in there, so just complete your thought because we. Yeah. You. I'm just saying that we are still using it only for staging areas. Okay. And it's not enough because with the right metadata, it can be used to load the model very easy. Uh, but it's hard to train and convince people of this. Uh, it's easy to show the power. Yep. But then people, um, the other developers, they. 
as soon as they can, they will get back for the comfort zone and it's visual studio and moving the boxes. And yeah, it's well. very frustrating because really it's um, you are trying to move people from working with the mouse to working with the keyboard. Yeah. And with this with the BIMO and developing by code the package, it comes other things like um, use uh, control version in a serious way with branch and merge, unit test, automated deploy, and people are running away from that. It's very hard to... Uh, every single time there is a change in someone's environment, it's a bit hard. I think that's that's universal rule. However, Regis, can you hear us? Yes, I can. So, uh, because you joined a bit late, obviously some problems. I don't know what what were the problems on your side now. Uh, a lot of them, but uh, <laughs> I'm using a lot, uh, of them. a lot of them. Okay, so uh, let's not waste time for them. Let's just uh, introduce yourself with just uh, one sentence. Who is Regis? <laughs> it's me. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Regis. I am also live in Denmark, originally from France, but. Uh, I'm a, a BI consultant from Denmark, let's say so. Okay, so Regis, so we're putting you immediately in the discussion. Everyone already said why they're using BMO and what's your opinion on this? Well, BMO is uh, great because you can uh, focus of, uh, about what is uh, important when uh, building uh, sys uh, packages, uh, about, about the building, not the repetitive task of uh, okay. designing them and putting them on the surface and changing uh, small pieces all the time. Okay, so have you used, the the next question was, have you, because I, I my opinion was that when I am seeing this in a presentation or somewhere else, I, I can say, yeah, that's amazing, that's great, but can we do this in production? I mean, is, that, is this ready for production usage? Do you see something like this? Are you using it for production purposes? All the time. All the time. So that's so that's obviously obviously is pr quite mature technology now, from at least from what I understand from you. Well, it's a, it's a declarative way to uh, to build uh, SSIS uh, packages. Yeah. So, so you don't use BML in production. You use your SSIS packages in production, and BML is for building them. Okay, but you build SSIS packages based on uh, based on BMO for production usages, right? For production usage, right? Yeah. Nice. So last time, at least from all I know, uh, we have some free tools there. Do you all use the free tools, or have you paid for the additional stuff? I have the paid uh, version. OK. Regis? Yes, you? I uh, also use the, the additional stuff you have to pay for. But you can, create a, you can get a free license, a trial license, and if you are uh, uh, participate in the BMO community, you can get the uh, extended uh, version of the license. Otherwise, that's, you need you need to pay. That's interesting tip. So, what about you, to Catherine? What? No, I I had the trial version and I fell in love with it, but I uh, haven't convinced my boss yet to actually buy the missed license. Okay. Okay. But I'm on it. I'm I'm trying to. Um, show them how useful BIMO is and how they can use MIST, especially now with the new features, uh, the metadata features coming in 4.0 that I'm sending the YouTube video to my boss uh, and the other architects. Uh, oh. So I'm crossing my fingers and um, doing We We are all with you on this. <laughs> We're all with you on this. So you all... Uh, anyway, I will not try to say it now. <laughs> Do you, do, you, do you use the paid version or no? The free one. The you are also using the free one. OK, that's interesting. By the way, Regis, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that that's a, bit, uh, that's a bit strange? Someone who is living in Norway, a Norway, Norwegian company, to not have the expensive stuff, that doesn't I don't. I don't feel that's kind of normal. I don't know for you, but it's a bit strange for me. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> you obviously, Catherine. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Let's. Um, well, it's true. It sounds strange. It sounds strange. Yeah, we were. We were. 
We it's were a big company, and we have um, three departments in Lithuania, Sweden, and Norway. And it's it's basically just a process of implementing the the processes, not the BIML technology, but uh, teaching all the developers how to use it, figuring out how to develop uh, in a distributed environment. That's that's the main part uh, okay, that's so, difficult for us. So obviously, it's not. A, have you seen resistance from people who are BI developers at least up until now, or people are more like? Because they see the positives, they're like, oh, yes, we are going to use this. No, they're not really. Um, they all want to start using it, but they're not really sure how and where to start. And also, it's it's a large company, and we have a thousand things we need to do. And yeah. uh, we're upgrading to SQL Server 2014 right now, so that's our number one priority. Yeah. Um, I so think... if it had just been me, I would have bought it and gone for it right away. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, have you seen resistance from the people that work around you, or no? Well, I um, work alone. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, it's um, easy, Rasmus. Yeah, I, I work alone on the, on, the, on the BI stuff, and I mean, that is only possible due to MIST and, and BIMO. Otherwise, I, I, I could no way have done that work by myself alone. No, so okay. That was, that was kind of the business case. I mean, the... Mist version or the Mist license is paid out of the, the the salary budget for the guy that we did not hire. Oh, okay, yeah. So so wait 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 wait. For the business perspective, that also makes sense because you can now, uh, as as many people call it, do more with less. At least yeah. that's what I heard from you. So you cannot hire one person, but actually automate work with BIMO. Yeah, that's that that's right. That's that's really impressive. Okay, uh, the other guys, any resistance from the people around you about BIMO? No, no, on, on the contrary. Uh, people are interested in in the capacity of BIMO. Also in the, the free uh, version you got uh, with uh, Bits uh, Helper. Okay. Uh, you, can, yeah. you can get very far with that. And, uh, and if you uh, put... Uh, uh, SSIS uh, developer uh, without Beamle and uh, SSIS uh, developer with uh, Beats helper, then uh, maybe we'll have to learn uh, a bit about the Beamle syntax the, the first uh, two, three hours, but after that, the productivity curve will, uh, will, uh, will flourish. Will be it will flourish. <laughs> yes. Okay, it will so be most faster than they're doing it manually, definitely. Yeah, so another, the last opinion, what do you yeah. uh, For us, it, it's a little bit strange because I already convinced my boss to pay for one license of MIST. Okay. But uh, I'm not sure if we'll do it the same way that Katrina will, I was explained that train everyone in MIST. Okay. One of the approach we are looking, it's just to have an um, architectural team that will build the patterns, design the patterns in MIST or are using Visual Studio. And then the, the generation process will be provided as a service. Okay. For example, if you have a standard way to describe your metadata in the company, you know, when you start a project, in the design phase, you will complete that document, you will submit it to the, the generation process, and it will give you uh, the package. You had to choose the patterns you want to apply. It okay. looks smart, but it, was, it has been incredibly hard to design the patterns. Oh. Every we, we just cannot agree, and that has been mining the BML effort. So I don't know, maybe we should go the Catherine way and just train everyone in this. Probably you should try. <laughs> at least. You should try. So one last question for you, and I want you to at least try to dream for a moment. So I'm not using BMO. I haven't used it because I'm... Not, I'm not like you guys. I do not. I'm not involved in BI all the time. I just recently ended my first business intelligence POC, not a huge project. So, my question for you is: What is missing in this technology at the moment, and what do you think is coming up next? What do you want to see next for this technology? Katrin is already thinking hard. What do you want to see, and what's missing? What What do you need? Um, I think 
it's it's more a community effort, but having some place to start for new projects because right now it's a it's a framework um, to build your own framework. It's not a complete solution that you can just deploy and implement. And I know uh, people are writing books uh, about them yeah. right now. Uh, Mist is being developed with the new metadata features, and they're doing a great effort on the webinars, things like that. Yep. Uh, so I just think maybe in a year you have more uh, best practices, um, like you have for SSIS now. Everyone knows about the naming standards and best practices, how to do things, and to get to that point with them as well. Okay. So by the way, that being said, is Bimo an open source project, or is it something no, it's that's not. It's, it's owned by Virgins? Is it? Yeah. That's interesting. So everyone in the community can built more and more there, right? Uh, no, you can you yeah. can use Bimmel to create your own frameworks, but the actual Bimmel language itself is is Vergence. Oh, okay, okay. So next, who is next? What is missing in your opinion, and what should be added in this technology? What do you think should come next? Yeah, well, if I can turn, uh, yeah. we can hear you very well. Good. Uh, most in the same line as, as Catherine, actually. Training. Uh, I recently just saw the guys asking for pre-cons at SQL Bits and stuff like that. Are there anything in Bimmel out there? And they are really not. I mean, Radians and the community is trying to catch up with the, with the webinars, but it's just not the same thing. So uh, the community has to, to get a bit more mature, I think, and start doing more oh, training yeah. sessions, more pre-cons and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and the the metadata is really your gold pocket. That's, that's where all of your value in your products lie. So the the new features of, of MIST is, is, is great with the metadata built-in, but that's MIST only. You okay. can't use that in the free version. Yeah, yeah. unfortunate. So probably around something around training and metadata should be the next logical step. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I'm I'm using MDS in, in 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 my session, but then again, that's also enterprise for features. So, but yeah, 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 that hurts. Regis, what do you think should what do you, what are you missing from from this? Um. I think there have been a lot of uh, of uh, additions of feature between the the last version and and the version that uh, is uh, out now uh, the four one and um, uh, probably uh, some more uh, um, I'll say that uh, some red uh, thread in uh, the way to to use it and and uh, build a project because now you can do pretty much. Uh, uh, whatever, whatever you want, and uh, maybe not always in, in the right way. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And one last opinion: what's missing and what's next? What should be next? So it's like a very saying the training. Um, I've been so, uh, there are videos from uh, one of the people from Virgins, Peter in Virgins, Australia. Uh, I don't know if you remember from SQL. To the five that was the um, project wheel, the reference. Yeah. I think we need something like that. Not only a database and some scripts, an example, uh, as reference of best practices, etc., like that. But also a document, uh, things to do, not to do. Okay. But it's a huge effort. And uh, uh, today, to everyone was doing scripts, but uh, it was like Ramos said. They are more or less the same, and we need to go on the next step and do it. But it, it's hard, even writing a book, it's hard, hard if you do it alone or just anyone else. Um, I don't know if we're just trying to scale up with partners. It's also so hard for them to scale. They already have means to develop. Mm -hmm. um, I don't so, know. Yeah. something. So in general, what I expect, because by hearing what you are saying, I expect that 2015 or at least one SQL SAT and one session there should be on best practices with BMO. 
So next year probably should be one of those years where the community has grown, has matured, now knows how to use this technology from all sides, meaning it's seen the positives, it's seen the negatives, and now knows what the problems are and whatnot, and will start to share them as best practices. Because from what I heard, those documents, those best practices are now missing. There are no such, right? No? When our, when our reason is not enough, um, and people will always ask for real use cases. We yeah. need to make the project real. You need to have a real use case. We can work everyone in the same. If not, we can, have, we can work in different posts uh, and different solutions, but uh, it's hard for anyone new to join everything each member of the community produce. Yeah. If you get the common ground and go from there, it will be easy. Yeah. Okay, so enough for BMO. Uh, at the end, Katrin, all of you, uh, I, of course, will put every one of your details on the blog post because I want people to be able to contact you and see what you are doing. But we're at the end of the year. What you are planning for next year, probably now is the time to share some exclusive news if they should be public. Or if, if you don't want to share that, where can people find you? Where are you going to be next in the 2015 year? Katrin, okay, a few. It starts in Germany in February. I'm uh, speaking at SQL Conference, doing my introduction to BIML session, which I'm really looking forward to. So I'll be there. OK, perfect. And I'm, I'm at work. I'm uh, working on doing some real, uh, more advanced projects, hopefully in the first uh, six months of the year, and maybe I can do a couple of sessions uh, at the end of the year. And outside of that, I'm also starting to plan our next SQL Saturday in Oslo, uh, aiming for August 29th. So a lot of things happening. Okay, so August, Oslo, SQL Sat there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lopez, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Where can people find more about you? Are you going to be somewhere speaking, or do you plan something interesting, etc., etc.? Hmm. We lost you. We lost your sound. We lost the sound for some reason. Can you? Yeah. Let's say say something now. No, we lost. You. We lost him. Right? I cannot hear him. Yeah. No. Anyone? Probably put it in the chat, put it in the chat, and I will tell you. I will repeat it here. Uh, Rasmus, where can people find more about you? Are you going to speak somewhere again? And do you plan something interesting? <laughs> I am speaking at Sico Rally Nordic on the, I don't know the exact date yet, but the conference is running from the 2nd to the 4th of March here in Copenhagen. Huge conference, by the way, Huge everyone. I think early bird is still on. Everybody, anybody interested? Uh, and besides that, I am more or less submitting to every Seeker Saturday within Europe that fits within my personal schedule. So hopefully, I will be near Seeker. Well, at a Seeker Saturday near everybody in Europe during the the next year. So. Okay, perfect. So you pr probably you should come to Sofia in October. I plan, plan and hope to do so. Uh, and, and there is a new one in Varna, so... Yeah, I can't make one, though. I'm, I'm, I'm with the family on holiday at a uh, uh, time, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate, yes. I understand. I understand. Okay, so, Regis, you are planning a lot of stuff. I can tell for now. Tell us a bit about, <laughs> a bit about this. Uh, now I'm, I'm planning on uh, using uh, Beemo to generate my Christmas packages. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Uh, please I, share the results. Yeah, <laughs> I will. Both the uh, hard and the soft uh, packages. No, uh, I'm uh, actually uh, working on the organization of the Super Rally Nordic in, uh, in, uh, in March. Yeah. For the conference where Rasmus is uh, speaking to. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, Working on several projects with uh, BMO actually right now. Oh, interesting! And um, I will be at the SQL conference like uh, like uh, Catherine. I'm looking forward to uh, to meet again there with all the other SQL friends, uh, guys and girls. Yeah. Okay. And 
is it public about something about the SQL set, or is it, or should we keep it private for now? No, it's uh, it's not uh, private. It's uh, public, but uh, it's too early to uh, yeah. to see it on the website. So the date will be the September the nineteenth, uh, uh, two thousand and fifteen in Copenhagen. It's yeah. a long time to that, but it will come faster than uh, than we. Then we can imagine absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So and SQL, it's in yeah. the reserve dates. If if somebody wants to see it, it, it it's listed on the SQL Server. It's hyper on the reserve dates. Oh, okay, okay. That's that's nice to know. So a lot of events, a lot of BMO work, a lot of Christmas BMO work, obviously. So we we I think we should end this here. I'll share the video now. Uh, thank you very much, guys. For uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being so patient in this in this thing we have can you hear us sure yeah. perfect so let's let's end this with him a few words from from you where can people find more about you and what do you plan and we'll end up here no we lost you again <laughs> so google hangouts is obviously not with us today so probably you can put it in the chat and i'll repeat it and guys, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we'll see. Rasmus, are you going to be in SQL conference in Germany? Uh, no, unfortunately, I missed. I missed that one actually. Uh, okay, so so I will be in the SQL conference. We can do some BMO stuff there. We can share them after that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I hope, uh, Katrin, you, you have to teach me on some business intelligence stuff. I hope to see you all at uh, hope to see you all at SQL Bits, if not before. Indeed, indeed. Okay, guys. So I will end this here. I will share it. Thank you very much again. It was uh, and wishing you great, great Christmas days and holidays. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Merry see Christmas. You, see, uh, Merry Christmas. Christmas. See you very soon. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.